Hypersonic missiles are a challenging technology to master because they are so fast that if the U.S. launched a scramjet missile, it could reach China in just 18 minutes, traveling at speeds of Mach 5 and above. These scramjet engines collect oxygen from the atmosphere as they travel, mixing it with hydrogen fuel to create the combustion needed for hypersonic flight. Meanwhile, glide hypersonic vehicles like the Chinese Dongfeng-17 became the first to integrate into production with conventional and nuclear warheads. They are also designed to target U.S. aircraft carriers, as they can change their trajectory mid-flight. This U.S. Aero AGM hypersonic weapon is a missile within a missile which pops out its cover and uses only the glide vehicle kinetic energy as a weapon. And not to forget the Russian hypersonic missile like the Kinzel. More details, all in the video ahead. To qualify as a hypersonic missile, it must possess three key attributes. Speed, maneuverability, and accuracy. Let's look at speed. As we all know, Mach 1 represents the speed of sound, which serves as our benchmark. To better understand this, let's make a few comparisons. Commercial airliners, for example, fly subsonically, just below Mach 1. In contrast, modern fighter jets can travel supersonically, reaching speeds of Mach 2 or 3. When we refer to hypersonic speeds, we're talking about anything Mach 5 and above. Space shuttles are an example of vehicles that travel hypersonically, often reaching speeds between Mach 20 and 24. But these can travel only for short distances at these speed. To sum it up, a hypersonic missile should cross Mach 25, which is around 19,000 miles per hour. But wait, that's not it. Hypersonic missiles should also have the capability of covering vast distances, such as from New York to Russia or from China to Texas and vice versa. There are three types of hypersonic missiles. The Scranja air-breathing missile from America, then comes the Glide hypersonic missiles like the Chinese DF-17 and the American Arrow in full-form, air-launched, rapid-response weapon. Finally, we have the Russian tried and tested Kinzel missile. Let's take a look at the difference between a ramjet and a scramjet missile in a super-simplified animation. A good example of the ramjet engine is this Brahmos supersonic cruise missile. The ramjet's intake takes in high-pressure air from the region in front of a high-speed object moving through the air. The intake slows the air to subsonic speed, increasing its pressure and temperature. In the combustion chamber, fuel is mixed with the compressed air and ignited, causing it to rapidly expand. This high-pressure, high-temperature exhaust gas is expelled through the nozzle, providing propulsion for the vehicle. Let's take a look at how a scramjet engine works. Step 1. The engine draws in an immense volume of air at extremely high speeds. The air intake is a critical step as it ensures that the scramjet engine has the necessary oxygen supply for combustion at hypersonic velocities. In step two phase, the fuel is injected into the engine and plays a dual role. Not only does it serve as the propellant, but also cools the engine walls. This cooling process is essential to prevent the engine components from overheating due to the intense friction and temperatures generated at hypersonic speeds. And step three, it is where combustion of the fuel and air mixture takes place. This is the most complex and critical part of the scramjet process. The challenge lies in maintaining stable combustion at speeds where the airflow can exceed 19,000 miles per hour. Engineering this step requires a deep understanding of aerodynamics, thermodynamics, and fluid dynamics to ensure that the fuel continues to burn effectively under such extreme conditions. Finally, at step four, the energized high temperature gases produced during combustion are then fed through the injectors. These gases are expelled at high velocities through the exhaust, generating thrust. This process accelerates the vehicle to speeds of Mach 5 and beyond, propelling it into the realm of hypersonic travel. Let's take a look inside a hypersonic missile. At the front is the cone, which can also accommodate a small warhead if needed. Just behind it are the batteries required for the avionics equipment, which guide the missile to its designated target. As a hypersonic missile, it still requires a fuel system to inject the right amount of hydrogen, which is stored in this tank here. Moving further back, we have the nozzle and adapter. Finally, we have the booster. Interestingly, this is a modified Atakam's supersonic missile. This missile has been used on the MLRS platform and can reach speeds of up to Mach 1. When it reaches a certain altitude, the missile separates from the booster, allowing it to activate the scramjet engine to reach five times the speed of sound. Reports say that China has successfully launched the hypersonic glide vehicle, also called the Dongfeng 17 or East Wind in Chinese. 
The primary difference between the Chinese and American hypersonic missiles is that the American Arrow is launched from a Boeing B-52 as his primary transport, while the Chinese hypersonic missile is launched from a five-axle transporter or after launcher, the WS-2500, produced by Wanshan. The GF-17 is a $120 million solid-fueled weapon, measures around 11 meters in length and weighs around 15,000 kilograms. When compared to a person, it looks huge. Let's take a look at its parts and functions. The DF-17 has two stages. The first one has a standard ballistic booster and the second stage contains a low-flying projectile. This is used for attacking a target following the first stage's ballistic re-entry. The booster is being burrowed from this DF-16, which again is a short-range ballistic missile. While at the top is this hypersonic glide vehicle, which can fly on a lower trajectory than intercontinental ballistic missiles, making them harder to intercept. Interestingly, China has also designed these weapons to destroy Western or U.S. aircraft carriers apart from it, carrying conventional and nuclear warhead. Let's take a look at how this works. When ready, the 10 x 10 heavy duty military truck can turn the launcher to a 90 degree angle. At a press of a button, it will launch the solid state's booster to a certain altitude. This booster will initiate separation and launch the glide vehicle and will then drop to a very low altitude. But the difference is that this can fly close to land or sea. By doing this, it avoids being detected by radar. That's not it. It can also change its trajectory mid-air at a staggering speed of Mach 5. This can become a huge threat for a carrier strike group to detect and destroy this missile anything within a range of 2,500 km, which translated to around 1,553 miles. Apart from the Russian Zirkin hypersonic missile, which we haven't seen tested, Let's take a look at the Kinzel missile. As you can see, these are very similar. Some analysts believe they even share many components with the infamous Iskander land-based ballistic missiles. Comparing this to a person will help you understand its size, since it's really huge. Starting from the bottom, we have the ejection pod. The second section consists of steerable fins attached to these jet vanes. The third part of the missile is the rocket motor. This is the missile's guidance section. Finally, the last part is the warhead section, which weighs around 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds. All of this engineering propels the missile to an astonishing terminal speed of Mach 12, which is approximately 14,700 kilometers per hour or 9,207 miles per hour. It is reported to have a range of 2,000 kilometers or 1,242 miles. Let's look at how this works. Step 1. The missile requires a platform, such as the MiG-31 Foxhound, which is a long-range supersonic interceptor. It can go up to a maximum speed of Mach 1.4 at low altitudes, which was the fastest in the 1980s. Step 2. The pilot releases the missile and the protective cap ejects at a safe distance. Step 3. After a few seconds, the missile's engines ignite, allowing it to accelerate to supersonic speeds. These can also be upgraded with a nuclear warhead, making it one of the most dangerous weapons on the battlefield. The American AGM Air-Launched Rapid Response Weapon Arrow was a hypersonic missile developed by Lockheed Martin, with a price tag of $18 million and a program cost of $2.2 billion. It consists of two main components, a booster rocket and a glide vehicle housed beneath a protective cover. Like the Chinese, this glide vehicle can hit speeds of around Mach 5 and above. Let's take a look at how this works. The B-52 bomber currently serves as the primary launch platform. It can carry around four missiles under each wing. When a target is identified, the B-52 flies approximately 3,000 miles towards the target. The missile is then dropped after a few seconds, and the booster engine is then activated, covering around a few hundred miles. The covers pop off, revealing a glide vehicle underneath this warhead. It then detaches unpowered and travels up to a speed of Mach 20, creating impact powerful to a bomb. After reaching a suitable altitude, the glide vehicle drops to a specific height, skimming the sea or land surface while changing directions to avoid any anti-air missile systems. This system was intended to target, destroy, or disable Russian and Chinese aircraft carriers. However, reports suggest that the $2 billion program was a failure, as unofficial testing and experimentation are ongoing at this moment.
We also make original engineering content, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos.